the lessons are coming from life. Hello everyone. I would like to very quickly talk about um, about a certain uh, situation that the sage finds or the seeker of wisdom who is seeking to become realized and enhance himself and his realization in this life. You will see that the seeker and as many spiritual seekers have been have recognize that the reality they're in, the life condition they're in, is not their actual condition, as if they felt they, they deserved more, right? And so they looked at that reality and couldn't understand it, so they left that reality. And as they did, they went into their unknown. And so they went into their sense of seeking. And as they sought, they came to this point where they received. Ask and you shall receive is very true, especially in the, of the nature of the mind. And thought. So you begin to see that the seeker begins to eventually understand that the wisdom he seeks, he is. And so as he is, his intelligence begins to trust life. Now, for Mr. Within, at certain point, and this is very recently, I went into a position where my trust in life had already dissolved my experience, but I was still wondering what next. It's as if I had such clarity in a present moment, silence, complete silence, complete stillness, and I was like, what next? And so I realized even in stillness there are subtle illusions which still you think that you found the present moment, but you're asking and expecting and waiting for something after the apocalypse. And so this is where you see the brilliance of the mind of the yogi, the mystic, and the Zen master, who uh, very, very mindfully understood that there was nothing after the apocalypse, no thing. The whole point of the apocalypse was, was physicality was shifting, so the experience was no longer in form. And so what that means is that Mr. Within realized that his expectation of what lesson should be manifest, or any lesson, even an expectation of something, was the attachment to still some form. And so the true observance is empty. And that is why where in yoga the concept of bhakti becomes important, the path of devotion. Suddenly you realize, oh my God, intellectually I can break it up, but I don't need to break it up. I need to go into the unified experience, which is my ability. Similar to how the fi one finger does not need to be alone when he recognizes the palm and the whole body. That intelligence is greater. So similarly, uh, it's as if like you can study the greatest thoughts and you can have the most abstract designs and thought and even uh, create uh, worlds of academia and your own theories on every theory ever made. But in, at that point, you begin to see that devotion means trusting the fact that you don't need all that. You don't need anything. And the fact that your experience is here. And so devotion is really the end of all knowledge the devotion of all existence as its greatness, being. So what that means is that mankind is playing a game with himself when he considers himself as a being, and then suddenly, he, as if like he's alive, he's, and suddenly the world around him he considers not alive and intelligent. You know, It's as if he's accepting uh, one aspect of reality to be self-aware and not recognizing that man and the whole planet could be self-aware, the whole galaxy could be self-aware. This could all be Andromeda looking back at herself, you know, who knows. So, <laughs> it's very important for us to see that man is beyond galaxies. He dissolves into an existential sense of awareness in which ideology is no longer playing the game of somebody searching for something. So, when you let the lessons come from life, your trust in life has trembled it transformed everything into trust in your experience. It's as if what they did not notice about the 
Dalai Lama or those beings who take the path of devotion and compassion is that of course they could have robbed that guy, he could have been so naive being compassionate in the world, but let's say when the apocalypse come, he would have even been compassionate to the apocalypse. And so you would see that being would be in a healthier reality in confronting the shift of his form, his physical form. And so the grave is actually a classroom until you begin to see that you were never one with the dirt. <laughs> because the dirt was an aspect of experience and you're many aspects of experience. And so what that means is that a slave is only a slave until he sees he is free. So you must experience your innate natural freedom, which is a self-awareness that is thoughtless and it is just absolute in observance. It is then where in your remembrance you have dissolved. It's as if it's like you take a quick route, it's a shortcut. <laughs> And of course, guys, there is a game until the player wakes up. And so yoga is pretty much the suggestion that this player stops playing that same game and just becomes still for a second and observes the field, observes where he is, and looks at the audience and suggests how many eons he wants to play the same game. <laughs> and of course, I'm being very playful because... Time and space are not segmented in one aspect of experience, but very collective in nature in another. So what that means is there is no time and space, but the great experience. What I would like to very playfully suggest is that we can look at religions and everything that is suggesting somewhere beyond as just a great experience. So why call it heaven? Let's just say he's going to his greater experience, right? And we say greater because he's observed everything physical, even in the dissolution. So it has to be something greater than this, right? <laughs> so we need to see that in us being healthy, if you just take care of yourself and maintain and bring yourself to awareness and harmony and seek natural knowledge, knowledge that is not based on a something, some wanting something, you know, someone wanting something, you know. You're not here to read all the books in the world. You're here to experience life and to see the quality of your vision. This must be important for you because this is, now is the time. There is no other time to be aware of human experience, you know. Don't forget about studying yourself. I've, I've noticed the phenomena of weirdness or what people call as weird. And when I see that, I see that, okay, of course, it might be meaningless to us, but something in the reality of that person who's doing that weird thing is making them do that. So that gives me a phenomenon of, of the fact that we think that person is weird, but each human being is having his own sense of reality. So what that means is uh, our collective agreement gives us the illusion that uh, we are all the same and some people are just insane and strange when we're all actually in experience our own separate view of the world. So what that means is if I bring a, an apple in front of you and I show it, some people are going to see the atom, which was Eve's mistake, and some people are going to see Newton's apple. You know, it's, it's just that the vision uh, is provided by that which is the experiencer. So what I found yoga and meditation to be is actually more advanced knowledge. Yoga and meditation is what you do after university. So university you're still absorbing, absorbing physical knowledge. And then during university I recommend for many students at this time to begin taking the path of a mystic. So what that means is uh, a university student is obviously getting a degree to handle problems. So if someone was getting an engineering degree, that person is getting an engineering degree to be able to solve problems. Right. So that person getting stressed out while doing the degree and as there have been cases of people jumping out of places they shouldn't be, you know, you see that you must also give uh, approaches and try to handle your internal experience. So, for example, maintaining your grades and your experience and your work and whatnot during, let's say, your 20s or your university years, you begin to see that in that time you have the ability to also cultivate inner meaning in the sense that you will realize your life is not just external. 
What that means is when you look at people, it's objective. When you try to look at yourself, you get a sub subjective experience. And so the mind and body are playfully uh, many different things in different views. So what that means is in certain aspects of experience, man is a body who has a mind. And in certain aspects of experience, man is a mind that is having a body. And so because we have that separation, we're both beyond such, an, uh, such a spectrum. So, uh, in, in our deep self-contemplative thought, we begin to see that thought originates from nothing. And so it is that which is uh, uh, putting stickers on things that is the flaw. You thinking that you're somebody and someone else is something is, is a flaw in how you are choosing to see it. So I found that the clarity in which meditation and many other uh, work suggests is it's as if like you're here to get the best vision of life you know like more than anything you buy let's say regardless of the best car you buy or the best phone you buy or the best thing whatever you buy you know uh, the best island you buy you know regardless of whatever your awareness to human experience will never not lead you to where you know you are. Abstraction can lead to agitation if you suddenly remember the good old days where you were just an individual. So what that means is uh, that person who's nervous is remembering some other time <laughs> in the past where that experience, uh, he had a different reaction then, you know. So uh, as we study the mind, we are studying the self and the choice is up to you to see if you want the lessons to be from you or what you expect you need to get or what life has expected you to be, you know. So if, if someone was in a, a very bad physical condition, so let's say of those people in poverty, you know, who are about to fade out of this reality, uh, you would begin to see that the greatest thing that a person in suffering can do is learn from the suffering. Just observe your suffering. If you're someone who's done a bad habit, if you're someone who you feel you're not living properly or you've done something that is taking you far away from your sense of sincerity and honesty, you know, just forget all that. Just see that you have one lifetime. You have a hundred years and you don't have time for depression. You just need to have complete clarity of where you exist and an ability uh, to handle any fluctuation. So don't, don't think about depression. Are you depressed? We're all going to die. <laughs> if I think about my death, of course I'm going to be depressed my whole life. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die eventually. I'm going to die eventually. You know? No, no, no. We need to be aware of the life because we're alive now. So what that means is what is healthy and what uh, uh, little did uh, many grandmothers know was that when they told their grandchildren to be grateful, they were opening dimensions where the child understood the world of devotion of how life gives to life and then takes from life. So we must not forget the glow in Native American wisdom and how the shaman uh, belonged to the wind. We have a bunch of options, guys. We, as people existing on this, in this physical plane, in humanity, have the option of taking self-observance into our own hands and making it an existential responsibility to know ourselves and learn of what the mind is and what existence is, you know. If we don't do that, we will be our mistake. 
But if we become mindful and if we get together and talk of depth, we will immediately break the illusions. What that means is depth is the greatest thing. It is that a wonderful technology that is still alive in giving man an ability to understand more of his world. So it is okay to think deep and also in that depth to be simple, be very simple. Don't expect too much, don't do anything. Just observe your life. Think as if you're walking in a park and in that level of just a manner, just study everything. Trust me, many, many great minds have stu uh, walked in the park. Before there was television, what do people do? They just went in the park. <laughs> they just went in the park and they just uh, walked and, you know, uh, and I heard somewhere they said, I don't know how they found this fact, but they said Beethoven, for example, walked. All Nikola Tesla walked. All these people walked, you know. And in their walk, they, what did they see? They saw life. And when I see people uh, trapping themselves in boxes and looking at the white side world through screens, it makes me wonder why. Why, why that is more valuable than to actually go in life and experience what is happening. Why a video game when there is actual life experience you can gain? <laughs> because life experience will give you a depth that uh, illusions in which you're keeping uh, will not give you. What that means is my abilities are never suggesting that I'm forever able. My abilities are suggesting that my awareness to the moment is communicating this much expression of me. We must uh, build uh, consciously uh, through our communication and advanced communication and proper piloting a path in understanding consciousness through any idea. So we are abusing a human being by labeling them. That is a kind of slavery. So what that means is that I am, I do not, I am not bothered by names, but names should not distract us from the clarity of existence. If you see your in turbulence, if you see you're doing things in which your life is just communicating to you as if you're not doing something properly, you know? Like you see that you've wronged, you feel wrong, guilty, whatever. You need to handle that. Don't, don't stay in depression. Immediately confront it. Sit down wherever you are. Uh, breathe very gently and align your breathing to the sound of ocean waves. And after doing this a couple of times, observe and in your clarity, you straighten yourself. Begin observing the core of your problem. You have an ability to dive into the depths of your mind. You might think that you're not creative, but that is ridiculous. You're a receiver of life. Your day-to-day -day job can be perceived so deeply by you that everything can inspire you. you'll begin seeing uh, the beauty in not just the design of how there's light, but also in how there's the shadow. You begin to see how reality is made of many aspects. And so me choosing a good and bad to keep myself a form in is just ridiculous when there's this constant infinite experience going on. And this infinite experience does not need to suggest that I need to just be suddenly in my own fantasy land. The pilot of consciousness is completely and very ably and in a functional manner handling the present moment and physicality. What that means is that the type of advanced human beings we want to have in this reality are human beings where, let's say, if suddenly the eyes in the sky suddenly came down, if, if let's say extraterrestrials came down, they would see that we are so conscious, we are so able and aware that we knew before they were coming. Because we had co-created, we were aware of the co-creation of that experience. So what that means is that uh, if, if, if you recognize yourself to the clarity of the emptiness within, within the nature of mind, and how I like to refer to the mind is similar to a pond that is still, unless you think, in which suddenly a rock is thrown and there's ripples. 
And so then there's the whole wave analogy and particle analogy that can manifest through the surface of the water representing light. However, as you begin looking at the nature of the mind, the cho your choice becomes important and where your choices are coming from. If you were to ask yourself immediately, where are my choices coming from, you would see that you might not have an answer. And if you do have an answer and you keep an answer, there's a flaw there. You should not have an answer because you cannot know. Because if you deeply look at reality, your certainty should not be based on illusion that is just satisfying a certain range of how you feel life should be. What that means is think of Plato's allegory of the cave. How long do we want to stay in that cave? How long do we want to look at our own shadows and think there's darkness in this world? <laughs> Words inspire to a certain point, but words are only meant to produce action. What that means is Martin Luther King gave a great speech only because he wanted people to do more than the speech. He wanted people to do such action that every moment of his speech he was giving all there was to communicate his message. You can be a communicator like that because you are, and that same you is the you in the universe. Become self-aware, existence is here to guide you as you are now manifest, your existence. Uh, work with your ability. So what that means is right now I'm a certain type of speaker. I'm a communicator based on how I've been raised. So uh, by listening to my words, let it inspire you, but don't let my voice become your, uh, your voice. What that means is utilize the wisdom of my ideas, but then suddenly uh, give yourself a moment of emptiness and in your stillness and your meditative sense of mode in nature, uh, you go dive into what life means for you and take a notebook, you know? And sometimes that may lead to paintings, drawings, it may lead to words. And don't be surprised, right now artists should be very creative in seeing that they are not only one kind of artist. If you're a painter, don't think you're not a writer. If you're a writer, don't think you're not a painter. You will see that the genius in the polymath was that the state of being suggested the ability in the field. So when the state of being rises, if the artist is getting so joyful from his creation, he will become, he will carry that creativity and joy in all aspects of his life. Artists who are constantly being creative are at a very high peak of bliss. And they are, they are very able beings in that sense, in working with the senses. So f through your own knowing, know the now. Because I'm pretty sure the same letters in own are the same letters in now. <laughs> and when fear comes, remember that you know yourself beyond the thought that can uh, deconstruct. Your existence is known. So what that means is right now, if I told you, what do you know? You may forget all the formulas, you know, all the uh, religious verses, you know, all the theories, you know, all the things, you know, and you will suddenly see you would know you exist or not. And this simple knowing is the beauty of the spark that is the same point in the same line, in the same plane of all manifestation that gives such and existential intelligence, the presence that is man. Man is the guest in the cosmos, and the cosmos has always welcomed him. And that is why devotion is where within you, you have found the love of all. in your own grace. Walk comfortably to where you need to be. Much blessings and namaste.